Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel Gabbetic and welcome to today's video. For those of you that have watched my channel before you'll know that I've used both the Dexcom G6 and the Dexcom G7 for the last few years. In fact I actually have the Dexcom G6 on my arm right now and over the last few years of course I have encountered some errors and problems with both Dexcom G6 and G7. Like any system it's not 100% perfect so I have a few errors that I've picked up over the few years I'm going to share with you today and hopefully there are solutions. I hope you like the video Video. If you do, please give it a big thumbs up, comment down below and subscribe if you're new to the channel. I have a few that I found myself over the years. If you have any more, please comment down below as well. And I hope you enjoyed the video. So the first error that I'm going to start with today applies to both the G6 and the G7. But in particular, the G7, I feel like if you're a Dexcom user, or you know about Dexcom, we've all heard about the signal loss issues. And especially with the Dexcom G7, it seems that even more so with the G7, people are experiencing signal loss. And I have definitely experienced this over the years. So if you have signal loss, you'll get this kind of error message. This is on the Dexcom G6, because I'm using that at the moment, remember? And it will say there's no alerts, you won't get any blood sugar readings or anything at all, really. And usually it says it can take up to 30 minutes to reconnect, that kind of thing. Now, Dexcom do say that you need to be within six feet of your device, with either the phone that you're using or the receiver. You need to be within six feet of the Dexcom itself from your phone to receiver. But honestly, I feel like if you're no Dexcom, you know that these signal loss issues can literally happen when you have your phone right beside you. It can be very annoying because, you know, you might need a reading there and then in order to carb count and take insulin for food. So it's very frustrating when this happens. And I know a lot of people, especially with the G7, have seen this happen more frequently. Now, personally, I can't say it's been that bad for me with the G7. Actually, now that I've gone back to using the G6, I've had a few more issues. And I think it's because I'm back using a transmitter again that I've had more signal loss than before but i do have one tip that i've kind of i don't know if people know this but i found it myself that definitely helped and this applies to doing the phone i don't know how much this works for receivers i don't actually know any tricks for if you get signal loss on the receiver because i use my phone mostly but if you get a signal loss and you're using a phone and instead of waiting for the 30 minutes like it says i find a hack is if you actually restart your phone it seems to get things like connecting way faster again so often if i go into the app and i see that there's a signal loss issue it takes 30 minutes i actually just turn off my phone and turn it back on again and usually within like one or two minutes of turning back on i'll have readings again i'm not sure why this is the solution to kind of that signal loss issue. I don't actually know what it is. I assume it's something to do with the Bluetooth because that's how Dexcom actually works for the alerts. So I'm assuming it's something to do with that. But that is definitely a hack that I have found that works. So if you ever do get a signal loss issue and it's on your phone, maybe try to turn the phone on and off again and see if you get your readings back. Now, my second error or kind of problem that I've encountered over my time using both of these is well, actually, you know what? I think it's kind of more with the G7 as well because I do think the G6 is actually pretty accurate. But the problem that I have the most is that I usually, like I know Dexcom does say itself that within the first 24 hours, you should kind of allow the sensor to adjust to your body. It might not have the most accurate readings, but like we want accurate readings from the start. So I actually find my sensor is sometimes really inaccurate when I first put it on. For example, my real blood sugar could be like six and then my Dexcom G7 is alarming saying I'm like 3.5. And I'm not low, so I know that that's wrong. So I actually really like to add a calibration at the very start. So if I put on my Dexcom G6 or my G7, what I'm talking about here, what I'll usually do is I'll put it on, I'll see what the value is. If it's way off, like it's a low, and my blood sugar is actually six, I'll definitely recalibrate. That seems to be what happens to me the most is that I seem to get a much lower reading than what my actual blood sugar is. So basically I'll put on the new sensor, I'll let it give the warm up time, blah, blah, blah. It'll start giving its first readings. Then if I think it's off, I'll go in with my blood sugar kit, test my own blood sugar, and then I'll actually add a calibration reading to the Dexcom. And I find that that helps hugely because like for hours, it could be alarming saying I'm low when my blood sugar is like five or six. Mm -hmm. I've had that before. I've like tried to give it time to sort itself out like Dexcom says, but like it just doesn't work. So I definitely think that's a help is to go in and add a calibration reading. If you're getting really inaccurate totally different values at the start especially if it's telling you that you're low or high when you're not 
it's gonna keep alarming if you don't. So I think it definitely helps. An issue with the phone with both the G6 and the G7. Now they do have two totally different apps on the phone. So because I kind of go between the two at the moment, I actually have both apps on my phone. But a big problem with the Dexcom is that you actually always need to have that app open. Now, obviously I don't have like a tip for this other than keep the app open, but I just wanted to make people aware because it's very easy to actually close all your apps and not know that you've closed it out. Now, luckily on my phone anyway, the app does give an alert to say app is closed. You'll get no more readings for both the G6 and the G7 app, but it is something to bear in mind that you actually cannot get readings on your phone if you have the Dexcom app closed. And you know, on my phone, I don't have to necessarily go into the app to get a reading. I can get that on like the widget screen of my phone. But if I do close the app, I'll lose that as well. So it's definitely something to keep a note of. Definitely always keep whichever Dexcom app you're on, the G6 or the G7, you have to keep the app open on your phone. Right, another little tip here. So if you can see from the screenshot, here's a reading on the Dexcom, but you'll notice something is off you'll notice that there's actually no arrows. So we all know the arrows will tell you the state of your blood sugar, whether you're rising, falling, or just staying constant. But if you see here, my one has just a reading circle, no arrows. So if you ever see that, it's actually, it's not really an error, but it is something to know. It actually just means that your blood sugar is fluctuating way more rapidly than the Dexcom can account for. So it could mean your blood sugar is rising way too fast or dropping way too fast. Oh, you normally get like double arrows going up and double arrows going down to show that. But if you just get a circle with literally no arrows, you're either going up really fast or down really fast. And it's doing it so much that the app actually itself can't show that anymore. So <laughs> there's not really a fix for that but it's just something to be mindful. If you do see a value of a reading here, like I have just a circle, no arrows, you are fluctuating really quickly. And basically the Dexcom can't really account for that. Number five then are inaccurate hypo readings when you are sleeping or lying on your Dexcom. So these are actually called compression lows. I've definitely spoken about this in my Freestyle Libra error video, I think, or one of my Freestyle Libra videos anyway. So compression lows are actually false hypo readings and alarms when you're like physically compressing your actual sensor. So usually when you're sleeping, I have had this and I used to have it a lot on the Libra, maybe because the Libra is a bit smaller than the Dexcom G6. Haven't had it actually that much on the G7, maybe once or twice. But I think it's a bit harder with the G6 to really lie on that because it's a bit more bulky and uncomfortable. Anyway, compression lows, false low values when you're lying on it and compressing it. I'm not sure exactly why this happened. You could definitely, if you know, comment down below and let me know. But the false readings are something to be aware of. So if you're asleep, you wake up with low blood sugar, maybe you want to do a double check obviously if you're feeling low you know you're low so take your sugar but if you're not feeling it maybe do a double check on your finger prick to see if you actually are low because if you've been asleep lying like this on your arm and you've compressed your dexcom it could be giving you a false value and like the last thing you want to do is take a load of sugar when you're not really low and go into high blood sugar and then the dexcom be alarming for that so do be aware of compression lows and how they can actually affect what your real blood glucose reading is. And my last tip, I wish I did have a G7 on to show you, but there's a picture, Anna's here with me. Yeah, this is a Dexcom G7, sit down, sit, sit. But there is a picture on the box. If you've never seen the okay. Dexcom G7, you'll see that this is the sensor here, but then there's this adhesive patch mm -hmm. around it here, and usually you get an over patch as well. I'll put in a picture of me wearing a G7 so you can see what I'm talking about. But a huge problem that I've actually been finding is that when I go to take off the G7 sensor, this little sensor part, the circle, rips off. It rips off with no adhesion. And then I have basically pulled the sensor itself off and then I have this ring of adhesion. So for some reason, I don't know if it's the size of the G7, I just seem to be getting a problem where only the sensor is ripping off and no adhesion at all. And I've like tried been really careful. And if I try to peel off the adhesion like this, it just rips into like, strips almost i think with the g7 the adhesion i don't know if it's because it's smaller and it has a bit less of this i just think it's not as good and it's definitely something to watch out for so yes that was my video on dexcom g6 and dexcom g7 errors and problems and some solutions to some of those and what to watch out for like i said if you've any that i haven't found please leave them in the comments down below i hope you enjoyed the video i hope it was helpful if you did please give it a thumbs up comment down below and subscribe if you're new to the channel 
thank you so much for watching i really hope the video was useful and yeah definitely let me know if there's anything else or any just tips with dexcom g6 and g7 in general thanks so much for watching and i'll see you all in the next video